<laughs> yes. <laughs> All right. I love it. Look at that. He's already got I the know, guitar right? out. Thank oh, you. man. Yeah. Well, I love it. I had to stick with that intro again, Jason. Dude, that's, know, a, that's a fun one, man. I, you know I, what's funny about that one? I, what's that? I, I mean, full disclosure, I wrote that one. Um, at the House of Blues, Chicago. Okay. Um, uh, in front of a sold out crowd. Um, uh, I think the lead singer had to run off stage and uh, take care of some business in the bathroom really quick. Uh, yeah, so I was there and I had to come up with something on the fly to fill some time. Nice. And that's what I came up with. And forevermore, that is one of my favorite slide tunes. You know, that will I like soon it be a tune that I can come up with. You know, I like it. Full yeah, tune. so welcome back to another episode of Dead Man Walking. I'm Greg. Of course, you guys all know Jason. And yeah. uh, we've been trying out new intros for the last five, six weeks. And I did that one again from last week just because I really like it. I just like that. Wow, I love wow, the slide, wow, wow. gritty. Yeah, you man, know? I love it. I and I'm I, a fan. And I do I love know. the fact that we have uh, we have a guest on, and uh, we were watching the monitor as we introed that, and he picked up that slick guitar and started playing it. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we have Mr. Darren Doan. How are you, sir? I'm doing good. It was kind of swampy, too. It was kind of a swampy right? vibe on oh, yeah, dude. Too. Oh, yeah, man. We like it swampy, dirty, yep. gritty, a little sweaty. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, man. <laughs> Well, listen, we're going to get to Darren. We're going to talk about uh, his creative agency and what he's doing in that space. But first, I think we wanted to get into some newsy news as well. Yep. And we love it when our guests uh, jump in and have input on that. So we might bring you into that, Darren. And we'll get to your bio here in a minute. But uh, you want to do some newsy news first? Let's do it. Let's do it. News, the 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 news, we got we got the route uh, clubhouse. We got the, the clubhouse on, on Thursday, we got the right? Shorts, man. We'll we'll get there. We'll get there. Let's go. All right. All right. All right so what anyway, got the news? first uh, newsy news story. So, Greg Darren, forty six percent want Dwayne the Rock Johnson as president. I want to know how many people they what? actually asked anyway, but uh, um, at least forty six percent. Of Americans would love it if uh, if he was uh, president. So this is what he said. He said, "I don't think our founding fathers ever envisioned a six four, bald, tattooed, half black, half Samoan, tequila drinking, pickup truck driving, fanny pack wearing guy joining their club. But if it ever happens." It'd be my honor to serve you, the people. He's oh, already turned into he's a pandering, politician. dude. Could you imagine if The Rock oh, was the dude. president? Man. He would just walk into the White House at like 3 a.m. Like, all right, guys, we're working uh, you know, on yeah, yeah. lats yeah. today. Oh, yeah. We're working on arms and never forget leg day. Yeah, well, we did have Theodore <laughs> Roosevelt, man. He was he was a cool dude, man. That yeah, dude that's was, true. Uh, he was on it, man. Darren, what do you think? Are we, vo are we uh, going to vote The Rock in in 2024 for president? Uh, no, <laughs> um, no, but it would be cool. I mean, it would be kind of cool because it's like, cause he could use like everything. I mean, you, you, you already alluded to it, but it'd be like, he could bring us through everything through kind of a workout metaphor. Right. You know right. what I mean? Like COVID would have been like, it's leg day people. It's leg day for the next five months. Right. I mean, like, he, I, I could see that. <laughs> like as president, just everything yeah. is a workout everything metaphor. You know, workout, Congress yeah, yeah. would do the heavy lifting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, you uh, the Senate could really get into the prep. T yeah, <laughs> yeah, no, for sure. Let's body slam COVID. I think I'm good on. I mean, I, I look at. I have nothing against Dwayne the Rock Johnson. Right, right. I know uh, just from some of the things he said, I don't line up with him politically. I think it'd be interesting if he did run, but I don't think he'd have my vote. But. Have you guys seen the movie Idiocracy? By, by any chance. You mean the prophecy? No, movie? idiocracy. Yeah, the prophecy. Oh, yeah, yeah. It is, it's totally a prophecy, but yeah, for sure. Yeah, the, I mean, that is, is that Before what we're... Before time? Are, are, we, are we headed towards a little, we're a little bit of that? I mean, that's, that's where Kanye we're West running. I mean, Kanye, man, I, I love your music, but can, can we just stay away from the politics? Let's, let's just, <laughs> right? just chill a little bit. But Yeah, well, I, I mean, the know. last president well, was a reality. Everyone, everyone made fun of, you know, I thought it was interesting. I think Trump 
I think Trump has shown that clearly there's a you know, like like there's a lot more to being president than just being famous. Right. 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 And you know what Trump had to navigate, but it's funny how it was like Trump, everybody was like, you know, he's a reality star. He's a reality star. Like, like, like this belittling comment. And yeah. as if, which is funny, as if somehow making a reality show still doesn't work. <laughs> right. Like, <laughs> right. Right. I don't know. There's still like 18 people with cameras and sound and editors and production yeah. vehicles. And everyone's like, he's a reality star. Like, you know. know, like it was just, it was always kind of funny that Hollywood actually made fun of him for basically being in film production. Yeah. Which which is weird. You're in that space, Darren. So it's kind of funny when you hear people in that industry making fun of that. And then you're also going, yeah, and his reality show probably made more money than your last eight films did. Exactly. You know, you know it's like it's yeah. it's a hard job <laughs> doing a production of any kind. But, yeah, I totally feel what you're saying. Yeah, I mean, it was produced by Mark Burnett, and no one's like, Mark Burnett, who's that guy? Oh, he makes reality shows. <laughs> just the no top. One says that about Mark Burnett. Right. <laughs> yeah, just the top 20 reality shows that you know by name yeah, yeah just that mark burnett but yeah so what else we got in the news yeah yeah so uh all right second story taken from the new york post i'm um, sorry guys um <laughs> elon musk's uh firm Neuralink. uh we've talked about Neuralink on this show before very interesting stuff go out there and check it out um has the tech to build a real Jurassic Park co-founder set. Oh, that never ends so, well. So yeah, so the co-founder, <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. So the co-founder of Elon Musk's firm, Neuralink, says they have the technology to build a real life version of Jurassic Park. We could probably build Jurassic Park if we wanted to. Max Ho Hodak? Hodak? Sure. I'm sorry. We'll Tweeted Saturday. Wouldn't be genetically authentic dinosaurs, but shrugging emoji. Maybe 15 years of breeding, engineering to get super exotic novel species. So, yeah. So, anyway, we're creating things in the labs. We are actually, uh, last week, there we uh, learned that, um, well, I don't know. I learned, maybe, that we are creating um, more babies in... Uh, test tubes, test like like, like little dishes. little petri dishes. Yeah. More science is happening in that manner. Um, yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, yeah. I mean, this, it, but I mean, to create more, uh, to create a dinosaur. Um, have, have they not seen Jurassic can Park? Can we just chill on some of that stuff? There's always going to be a Newman like character. Yeah, someone's going to steal those dang Neuralink dinosaurs, and they're going to run amok in New York City. Come yeah. on, there's there's no reason to have dinosaurs. But. I think I mixed up like four movies there, but you, you get the you get the point. <laughs> what do you think, Darren? Should we get should we get some uh, dinosaurs involved in this world too? Let's do it. Post mill, baby. Uh, <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not into that one. I'm not see like that. But get, but then again, I've like drunk the Kool Aid with Elon Musk. I'm like, yeah, let's go. Like whatever <laughs> Elon's doing, I'm like, I'm just super into it. Like there's no worldview filter whatsoever. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> yeah let's go so, he's, he's... I would say yes, but... <laughs> but it's funny you say that because, uh, about the because um sometimes as like a you know when you're when you're a filmmaker and you have you know and people want to talk to you about projects sometimes you get invited to things that there's a lot of money and a lot of people and a lot of tech and sometimes i was at an event where it was like all the best minds in this field of like um, breeding and cloning and, and all that stuff and the stuff and the stuff I heard from from these people three years ago that they were already doing mm. probably scary was shocking yeah <laughs> was just shocking I had a doctor and I can't I can't I mean just assume I, I don't know what I'm talking about and I'm making all this up but <laughs> I had a guy I had the guy next to me go I could clone a human tomorrow. <laughs> wow! Like tomorrow, if I want. Yeah. What? It's easy. Yeah. Yeah. Oh we've been, I mean, gosh. we've been cloning oh, sheep like, for twenty five like, years. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, one hundred percent. Yeah, he I said mean, half man, half pig. He said half man, half pig. He's like, I could do it tomorrow. Are you serious? It's the. It, like, it, oh, like, oh yeah. Why? Why? Why do <laughs> like? I don't know. Maybe, maybe I'm just too normal of a dude, but I'm just like. Why do we need half man, half pig? Why do we even need to know that that can work? You know, like, like what about it? Um, oh, we want to be God. 
Yeah, that's yeah, why. Yeah, yeah. That's totally why depraved. we want yeah. to be God. Yeah. We want, you know, we want to control and be God. Right. Sorry. Well, was, I think it's interesting, yeah, you, like, I just, I'm more interested in, like, the pastor that's got to baptize the chimera, like the half <laughs> dude, half kid. Like, he thought, like, he thought baptizing neck, like, like neck cat, like neck cat guy was weird. Right. Wait till he's going to do the half breed, you know? <laughs> yeah, he's like, and next we have Chupacabra up yeah. to, uh, he's professing his faith today. Yeah. No, absolutely. Yeah. We got we got anything else in news? No, no, no. That that was all I had for news this week, man. Awesome, man. So some fun ones. Yeah. yeah. Usually we get serious, but we don't like Here's to get too awfully serious when yeah, we have Darren man. on the podcast. That's but yeah, right. so let, let's get into it because uh, di- we met Darren down at Fe- uh, Fight Left Feast yep. in Nashville or Frankfurt or what was it? Franklin, Franklin, Franklin. whatever it was outside of Nashville yep. last October. <laughs> Uh, he came in, took over our set. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Frankfurt, Germany. We, in, we flew uh, there. In, free, in, in Freebird, Leonard Skinner. Uh, yeah, yeah. That's where we met him. And it was, uh, you know, he just took over the booth uh, like he does. He walks into a room. He just kind of takes oh, it over. Yeah. And you just do, you know, you just, you live in Darren's world. It was awesome. Uh, it was awesome. And uh, then started following on social media and seeing the things he's doing. He owns a uh, creative agency, uh, obviously director, film producer, all these different things, music videos, uh, full length feature films just a uh, a bundle of freaking energy and ideas yep uh so anytime that we have a chance to sit down and talk to someone like that we definitely want to bring them on darren i'm just going to come right out with it and ask what i think everyone's thinking is like with social media is just like normal marketing dead uh yeah well uh, yeah yes and no um I think the way people have been going about it in one sense is still the, the principles are still there. People just have a hard time kind of realigning what's happening. All marketing or advertising, it depends what, you know, how you want to define that. There's way, you know, if you look that up, there's ways you could do that. You know, advertising is you're trying to, you know, you're, you're letting people know about something technically marketing is market share, what, you know, but people conflate those, those two. But, you want to get in front of as many eyeballs as possible, whatever you're doing. I mean, that's just, that's sure. just basic everything, you know, so whether it's billboards, whether it's newspaper, whether it's Times Square, whether it's on taxi cab, whether it's wrapping someone's truck or social media, you just want to get in front of people. I think what, I think what's dead is the amount of money people are spending on traditional forms of outlets and, and not understanding that the best value in regards to reaching people and getting eyeballs is social media, which is just another word for the internet. Right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's crazy that he you says guys, that too. Look at you guys. 10, 10, 10 years ago, you guys could not have done what you're doing right now. Sure. Mm-mm. No, you're absolutely right. It's and it's, true. it's been made much cheaper, much more effective. Uh, and yeah, to navigate those waters is much easier as well. So mm-hmm. traditional marketing, I think you're right. Uh, I, those avenues just don't work. I'm a real estate broker, man. I'm not doing anything that real estate brokers were doing even five years ago, 10 years ago when I got into it, I wasn't as in newspapers. I wasn't doing billboards. I wasn't doing direct marketing. I tell people the only reason I'm on Facebook, I built my business off of Facebook and Instagram. I mean, that's really where I bought, uh, built it just because I realized, wow, if I can just find a couple influencers that, uh, and when I say influencers, I mean people who influence. I'm not talking about the Kardashians. I mean, I would literally hashtag something in a certain area. And if they had 15, 20,000 more followers, I'd direct message them and go, look at man, I want to give you this free uh, whatever it was, whether it was a broker priced opinion or an appraisal or a value, because you know a lot of people, I want to show you what I can do. And it, you don't have to pay for it. You don't even have to refer it. But if you ever want to use me, call me. And that really helped. And it was something that was absolutely free. It just took time and dedication. And I look at social media and the internet and what, and what you're doing. And I feel like it takes a certain person with kind of a certain brain. Does that make sense? It almost like you have to look at the world as your oyster and go, okay, how do I figure yeah. this out? And I've been following you on Instagram and some of the content that you are posting is still light years ahead of what other content creating marketing agencies are doing. And I'm not just saying that because you're a guest on our podcast and we want to make you feel good. I'm saying that because it's different. Can you talk about that a little bit, how you're looking at that and setting yourself apart from the other marketing agencies that are really just saying, Oh, it's all social. Yeah. Well, and I appreciate that, but yeah, you just said something that helped me just click on something, which I'm going to steal now. But 
Um, yeah, you you really do have. <laughs> I'm tripping now because you said something. Um, what happened is all the gatekeepers got kicked out, mm, and it turns yeah. out that a lot of people, a lot of people love gatekeepers. They love rules. I got I got my four year degree. Then maybe I got additional two. I got my license. There's a game I get to play. I I do this. I do this. I do an ad. Then I do a follow up. I get some pens made. Um, and that, that's kind of, in a lot of ways, the world has not been rewarding hard work. I think the last 20 years, it's kind of rewarded because of gatekeepers, a system playing it, you know, like there's rules here and you got to kind of work your way up. You know, you know, there's, there's a hierarchy here. What social media has done is it's destroyed every gatekeeper. And the world is your oyster. And if you want to go after it, it disproportionately benefits that kind of a mindset. So that's just making me think what you just said. What I'm trying to do is really think in terms of that, which is you need to be doing everything. You have to have the guts to do everything mm. every single day. Every idea you have, I think you should go for it because the idea, you talked about playing God. Forget about playing God with, you know, breeding animals and dinosaurs people play god every day when they think they know how to reach people at a particular mm. time of the day because that's how people react to an eight second clip on a thursday at 1204 p.m but we're going to wait maybe we'll drop it at 7 p.m because the 7 p.m metrics tell us that we get more engagement and views that is that's actually more godlike thinking than the dinosaurs and the dna human beings are experiencing things every single second of the day and sometimes there's the zeitgeist sometimes there's hey you posted a picture it's sunday at 1 42 p.m and you're like hope everyone's having a killer weekend and at 1 43 kobe bryant's helicopter goes down right right and at that moment you should and at that moment you should probably get rid of the post you just posted mm -hmm. right right so that's that's the zeitgeist when everybody feels that but people are going through that every single second of the day just because you've got a metric and you've got an audience, you don't know if their girlfriend just left and you don't know if their grandparent just died. You know, So even though we think we have all these metrics and demos, I believe that by going full throttle every single day, communicating a thousand times a day, that's how you actually engage with the world. That's how you're actually going to build brands. Uh, yeah, I was in a band. We toured and traveled, went all over the world. Um, uh, and at first, when we were first trying to... Oh, no, 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 no. What was the band? Give me the year. Come oh, on. okay, okay. So we were called Scratch Track. And we were a uh, band from okay. probably about 2000... Yeah, 2000 until about uh, 2013, 2014, somewhere around there. Um, and yeah, man, we, we toured with everybody from Zach Brown to The Roots to... You know, Jurassic Five. I mean, we were all over the board, but uh, but anyway, as we were trying to figure this out, you know, like our biggest um, <laughs> our biggest hurdle was management because <laughs> management was thinking in a way that we were not thinking whatsoever. You know, they were like, we, you know, have you guys ever thought about maybe doing a ad in Rolling Stone? We're like, well, sure, yeah. How much does that cost? Oh, forty thousand dollars. Oh, cool. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm eating peanut butter and crackers right now. You know, <laughs> like I don't have any money whatsoever. Like, how am I going to pay for a forty thousand? You know, and it was always like all this big, you know, all these big, huge advertisements that they were trying to get on board with. They're like trying to get us on a tour and, you know, trying to get, you know, and we were just so much more grassroots. And whenever YouTube came out, I mean, YouTube was something that we were trying to throw videos up of us just even having a conversation. You know, it was something as little as a conversation. We would get more views on some of those conversations than we would our actual tunes you know at, at times you know um uh, but i don't know there, yeah. there was just something about that era right around 2003 2004 2005 when all of these newer uh social medias were coming out i mean you know myspace i don't even know when that when that actually came out when i actually joined but facebook you know we, we probably got on that about 2006 2007 so we were probably behind the ball on that and then youtube i mean you know there were so many different outlets but we didn't realize how big of an impact it was going to make in the next 15 years, yeah. you know? So we were just, you know, a, a band. Let me uh, tell you, let me 
tell you my MySpace story because my MySpace story I had forgotten. And when I changed my entire production company over to an agency in the last couple of years, it's because a lot of that, I remember what happened with MySpace. Working with all these bands, you know, and just crushing it. And yeah, around 2003, 2004, somewhere in there, whenever MySpace shows up, we just thought, oh, this is dumb, whatever, right? Yeah. And I, I had a manager come in. I was hanging with this manager of a band, and I'm kind of busy. We're just catching up. And he says, yeah, we were on tour in North Carolina. We had this concert. It got canceled last minute. We're sitting there in North Carolina. He's like, so I went on MySpace. I told everyone that the show is canceled. And some kid said, hey, I got this huge barn like 30 miles north. He's like, so we went there and from a, well, it was going to be a 200 person show. It ended up being like a thousand kids in the barn. <laughs> and it was kind of going in one ear. I almost got out the other. I said, wait, wait, wait. What did you just say? Yeah, right. Right. Yeah. I was, right. <laughs> I, was like, I was like, wait, wait, wait. I literally like, I was like, wait. What it wait 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 hold on? <laughs> right. I was like this this is now this is wait wait and he explained it to me. I went online, I found MySpace, and put up a profile. The next day, I woke up to about five hundred friends and about thirty like DMs, whatever those were back then, from bands who were like. Dude, I grew up on your music videos. Will you do a music video for us? Wow. Like overnight. And yeah. I was like, what you mean I'm some what do you mean I'm somebody? <laughs> I had no idea. I had no idea. And that kind of power was the beginning of the gatekeepers being gone. But I'm always interested in not just the technology piece of the gatekeeping. Mm. The fact that the boots on the ground to get a thousand kids over to a barn. Yeah. Right. Like forget the promoter, forget all that. Like that's the kind of stuff that I'm seeing right now on a global scale. Yeah. That that's happening right now. So let me ask you this. Uh, if were you done there, yeah, Jason, yeah, yeah. can I jump yeah. in for a minute? Totally. So we are now 20 years into the social media experience, experiment, whatever you want to call it. We have creative agencies like yourself that are very successful at helping people advertise, market, uh, promote the brand, uh, all those different things. And maybe you can speak to a little bit uh, about what exactly it is that you help people with. So if there are listeners listening and they need your services, they can call you or DM you, but what separates the, the agencies now? So now we've, we've been in this experiment for 20 years. We had a lot of people catch on. We have the Gary Vaynerchuks and all that of, of, of this era saying, yep, we're, we're all in on the social media and things like that. What separates someone like your agency from the guys that go, oh yeah, we can do a little Facebook advertising, little Instagram uh, promotion, and, we, and we'll cross our fingers and, and we hope that we can help you. What is it that separates you and what are, is it that you're really focusing on in your agency to take your clients to the next level? How, how do you put out a thousand pieces of content a day? Mm, mm. Nice. So it is all about content. Still, That's it. Yeah. You know what volume. was cool? It's pure volume. Yeah. It's just volume, volume, volume. And then once everybody shows up and understands that it's volume, then that gets exciting because then creative will be the differential. Mm. Okay. So let me ask you this then in, in the beginning, if it's just, if it's volume of content is, is, is it, is, does every piece of content have to have some type of value to the watcher or listener, or is it just content, get the content out, get the name recognition out. And then we shift gears and we start to provide value through our content. Um, or is it I both? Think that's the amazing, well, I, I think it's both, but I think to your first point, that's what's really fun about this whole conversation is we think we know what's going to bring value to the audience, but we don't know what's going to bring value to the audience. The audience gets to tell us what's high quality. Oh, wow. Yeah. Right. See, so we, as a bunch of artists, think we know what's best for everybody. Mm. That's what's being flipped. That's what's being flipped right now on its head. Now, I think you could be talented. I think you'd be, you could be creative and still create tons of content. You know, my thing that I've kind of got stuck on, I kind of accidentally walked into this kind of picture, but I always ask people, would you rather own the Mona Lisa or would you rather own Da Vinci's sketchbook? Mm. Yeah, I want that sketchbook, baby. Yeah. I don't want the Mona Lisa. Right. 
So, so why are we walking around trying to create Mona Lisa? Right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Let your life be a sketchbook. Let your marketing campaign be a sketchbook. Let the preliminary campaign of the campaign be the sketchbook of trying to figure out what the campaign is before you put the campaign out. Bring people along to that process. Let them see every font choice, the idea. Like, that's what I, I like movies. I'd rather watch the making of any movie than watch a movie if it was documented. Hmm. And that's how I think we, that, that we're wired. And so I think, you put out a ton of content. Let the audience decide. I mean, I'm sure you guys know this. You think you got to bang an ad. You put something out, and like, ah, that. right. And you put something right. out. People love it, and you're like, what? So to me, what you tap in us as an agency. What we do is we try to get our clients completely sold on this, which means now everyone. You want to talk about inclusion? You actually want to talk about real diversity? You want to talk about really being organic and natural and authentic? Let everyone start creating with you at a company or an entity. Just start throwing everything out there. And the fun thing is, is certain things connect. And let's say you thought it was a bad idea or it was kind of lame, but three people connect with it. That's awesome. Yeah, like that's, right. By, by doing a thousand pieces of content, I think you have the opportunity to actually connect. That's why I don't, I just post whenever I got something, I go. I don't wait for a perfect time. Because I think human beings are worth more than a metric scale number for when we think we're getting more likes. If at midnight on a Sunday I've got something and only 30 people are going to get it, I like those 30 people. Why not put something out? Right. Yeah. 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 And I think consistency is important there oh, too. Oh, definitely. Yeah. That. Something, something that uh, I, I can't remember where you said this at, Darren, but I thought it was so cool. You were just like, you know what? If there's a local ice cream shop down the road, and you really enjoy going in there, just go in there and ask them if they want a video made and just go in there and make a banging video right. and right. like put it out for them, you know, and don't ask, just take, take it back, edit it down and then take it back to them and say, here you go. Use it if you want, you know, like that, that yeah. stuff like that, I think if really not, speaks. If not, if not make your own. I mean, take the content aside from the little nods at lap dance devil, whatever video thing. Yeah. But what little, but but what what but what little Nas did. And by the way, shame on everyone for not doing the research and realizing that Nike was not in on the deal. Right. Shame on everyone. Had nothing hmm. to do with shame it. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, but what little Nas did, which I love, is he hijacked a brand. He did what was totally legal to do. He hijacked a brand, he made it his own. Christian Take a page out of Little Nas X playbook here. Make take take dominion over whatever you want, J even by play, playing by the rules. You can buy a shoe and you can paint on it and you can and you can flip that shoe. Okay, you are allowed to do that. The reason why it was so gnarly for Little Nas X is because he did it in such a big way that everybody assumed there was a partnership. Hmm. That is some high level dominion. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And going back to your earlier point too, uh, Darren, I feel like that is why the gatekeepers have kind of left because you look at the Mad Men era and it was businesses and business owners and creative ad agencies telling the consumer what they want. And now we kind of have to be reactionary and listen to what the actual client customer or consumer wants. And I think that really upsets some people when you're in the driver's seat and you get to tell people, no, look, buy this because of this ad, you have to go buy this or do this, or you like that. But now with social media, there's so many flavors out there. And like you said, all that content out there. And now we have to be reactionary to it, actually be good listeners, good little entrepreneurs see what the market is demanding and then infiltrate that and, and try to be creative and, and make money and, and all those things off of that. I feel like that really weeds out some of these creative uh, agencies and, and content providers that still want to just kind of tell you, Oh no, this is what you should be watching. These are the memes you should be looking at. These are the, this uh, is what works. This is what yeah. works. Yeah. And it's not like that anymore, man. Well, there's a higher level to there too, which is really, really deep, which is, when brands think they know what their identity is, when, when a brand says, let me tell you who we are and what we mean to people, as if you could actually do that. Right. I mean, if, if Nike wanted to get serious or if Kellogg Cornflakes wanted to get serious, not serious, they wanted to get real, go find a thousand people that love your brand 
and then ask them what that brand means to them. Mm. You're, and you're going to get probably a thousand different answers. Yeah, for sure. Right. I mean, and so someone might, the reason why they love Nike is because of X and this person loves Nike. Because, but someone got together and said, no, 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 we know, we know who our audience is. You do not know who your audience is in that way. And so I think what the, the optimistic flip on that should be that actually gives you leverage to go deeper, wider, because now you can do everything. And by the way, really, really, really deep, big global brands know this. You travel around the world and you're like, okay, wait, I know that company, but that's not the logo in America. Right. They have, oh, because they're, oh, because they know the culture and they know like that's how the world works. But we think, oh, no, 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 we got to get brand. We can't change our logo. We can't change our font. We can't do any of this because, because dumb humans might get confused. Yeah. Right. <laughs> is, that a different, is that a different font? Oh, I don't know what to do. Is that Starbucks font? Yeah. Yeah. I feel like that's uh, kind of been, it's, I don't know. that. Well, the ones at the top were always the ones that would know better than all of us, right? Yeah. <laughs> the, the, the ones in the suits were always like, eh, I don't know, man. It's like, well, who are you? <laughs> no, ab- absolutely, absolutely. So let's shift gears here a little bit as we uh, start to wind down here, Darren. So um, is there, I'm going to tell you something, and you tell me if, if you agree with this or not. It always really irks me when people put Christian in front of something artistic, Christian rock music, Christian art, Christian whatever. Um, you know, there's a great quote by General Simpson that says, does Satan own the seventh chord? Does he own the Picasso? Does he own the painting and the canvas? Because if he does, we will go down to hell and plunder it and give it back and take it back for the Lord because he has created all things for us. So I kind of have this view of, look at the Lord created uh, uh, art for me for us. Okay. I'm a musician, uh, not much of an artist on canvas. I can play little keys, play little drums. My, my girls have the, 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 uh, art down. I don't like it when we kind of put ourselves in a box like that and say, Oh, it has to be Christian, this or Christian, that Christian art, Christian creative, whatever I'm called to just enjoy the art that the Lord has created for me. So do you find a challenge in, in uh, kind of balancing your biblical worldview with what you do in the creative realm? Or do you have more of that view of, look at man, uh, yeah, I have a biblical worldview, but I'm just doing what I should be doing in, in, this, in this profession or in, in this space? Um, well, I mean, the way you described it was so passionate and cool. I, I, I like <laughs> I like the way you presented it. So, You'll I mean, just go with that. I like, um, so I like that category for sure. And <laughs> I think, and I think I know what you're pushing back against too. So like, I get it. And I love that. Um, I'm, I'm fine with just being labeled Christian, anything, but, right. that, but that's just yeah. me. I mean, I'm like, I, you know, like I think, and again, we, we all come from different places. And so I didn't have a lot of the, the, you know, it's, it's hard to imagine, but I mean, man, 20 years ago, like you said, you, when, when, when you were called a Christian rock band or a Christian band or 25 years ago, dude, I mean, that, dude, it was gnarly. Pe- people don't realize how gnarly that was to go on tour with a secular band and sure. you were the Christian band. Right. And you had voters coming up to you saying, don't you dare talk about Jesus when you get on that stage. I saw Dave Dacre go through that. I saw Supertones go through that. I mm. saw like... That, that was a real thing. Now, we don't even think about that anymore. And so there is this dialogue of, you know, um, I'm not a Christian rock band. I'm a Christian in a rock band. My contrarian nature, watching all that, coming to Christ later in my life, in my mid-20s, I was like, why are y'all running from that? I'm like, I mm. love it. Yeah. Mm. Like, yeah. I was like, I love it. I think I've got the good. I think I can back it up. And putting Christian in front of it, to me, just seemed even more punk rock. But that's because more of my trajectory. So when you say what you say, I go, yes. Mm. For me, it's way more contrarian in my circles to say, go ahead and put Christian in front of everything on me. Mm. Okay. Yeah. No, Love I like it. it. Yeah. No, my background a little bit. We, I did uh, attend a church where Fair people enough. where people burned jars of clay CDs because they had a contract with Coca-Cola. I do remember right. that. I just... <laughs> 
burn they jars of clay CDs. Not no, no, just because it was jars of clay. <laughs> no, I'm how joking. dare you, sir? <laughs> we we toured we toured with those. But we dude, all those know, guys. Those guys are actually good guys. And we um, all know that supertones <laughs> always strike back. Always strike right, back. Right, right. No, yeah. It was it, what we ran into. I mean, we were Christians in a, in a quote unquote secular band or mm-hmm, whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, just <laughs> all we were thinking, we're just writing music, you know, like yeah. from a Christian perspective. I mean, it, it, it was like, you know, we wanted to be less exclusive and more inclusive, I guess at the time was the, was the terminology that we were using, unfortunately. Um, uh, but you know, it, it was like, man, we, we just wanted to make music, you know, and it wasn't like we th- we weren't trying to go towards the Christian music industry where we were saying Jesus every other lyric or whatever. But, you know, looking back now, I'm like, man, I really wish that we would have because we wouldn't have ran into so many troubles. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> right? but, uh, but yeah, man. Yeah. Oh, all There's right. A lot to that. But. So, all right, we're going to get into our last segment here with Darren. So we created a little segment might be a smashing hit, might be a big flop. That's why we can always edit in post. Sure. Uh, it's a, it's a little thing that uh, we like to call. Do don't or don't it. Don't it. Don't it. It's called <laughs> do don't or don't it, which eg- means this: Jason and I are going to rapid fire you some pitches. Now you're a creative agency. I'm sure you get businesses in there. I know you've been in the film industry, been in the music uh, industry. You get pitches from whether it's, uh, managers, PR people, artists themselves, and they might be pitching you something. We're going to rapid fire you some pitches. If you think it's, this is oh, so you good. want to watch. This is so good. I'm sending you guys. <laughs> this is so good and, and you're going to say, look at it. it's okay. I yeah, might, yeah. I might jive with that. That's a do. All right. right. If, if it's horrible and you go, what are you thinking? That's I'm not on board. That's a don't. If it's fire and you say, look at, we got to get on this tomorrow. That's a yeah. donut. Because if, if it's if it's a donut, I wrote it. If it's a don't, it's Greg. I wrote, wrote it. I wrote it. Okay. And for all you listeners out there too, make sure you go follow the hashtag donut. D O A N E I T. Created that yes. dang hashtag, yeah, and man. then made it so darn popular. And then you're like, oh well, the guy owns a creative agency. Yeah, of course yeah, exactly. he knows what right. the heck he's doing. All right, are we ready? Yeah, go ahead. We're gonna we're gonna go through this. It'd be a couple, uh, you know, maybe two three sentences of an idea, and you give me a do don't. Or don't it. Here we go. All right. What does it mean to be a Christian and a public servant? Follow a local Christian politician dedicated to their duty as an elected official through their daily life as a public servant. Although the election cycle would give you the most compelling content, door knocking, rejections, coffee hours, arguments, fundraiser accomplishments, and disappointments, and if they're elected, you could follow their roll calls, legislative votes, and interaction with their community, with their worldview, and how they balance that in a current political sized world is that a do don't or don't it that's a donut that's a donut all day long <laughs> don't it i love it what do you got for him Jason? we gotta have a ding 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 oh yeah, it's, uh, ding, ding, yeah, ding. yeah we need that yeah <laughs> all right so uh make a speed metal music video where all the band members are dressed as 80s styled reformation characters punk rock calvin hair metal luther and unitard wearing Knox. <laughs> oh <laughs> he's picturing it. Yeah, Look yeah, at him. He's picturing yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Watch, watch out. Oh, I do oh. That's a donut. I'm going that's with a donut. that's a donut. Oh, two donuts in a row. <laughs> here we go. <laughs> All right, here we go. We it want. Two, it was a two hour donut. I was just. <laughs> Do you do, I was all in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> all right, here we go. We want Darren to create a social media campaign to bring back the flip phone. No smartphones, all predictive text, unplug so you can plug into the real world, trash that iPhone so you can get in the IRL. That's real life. Is that a do, don't, or don't it? That's a don't, 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 don't. <laughs> All right. He said that with authority. Get on those right? smartphones. Yeah, yeah, right. What do you got, Jay? All right. Rude and reformed. Why are those in the reformed community? Uh, why are those in the reformed community perceived by their evangelical brethren as rude, rowdy, and just downright mean? What gives? Ooh, would you do a docuseries on that? Is that a do, don't, or don't it? I missed the I I I, miss, I I get the I get the premise question. Yeah. Um, I just don't know what we're doing with it, but um, movie. You can say don't. Let's do a movie. movie. You're allowed to say don't. So, I think it's a donut. If it's a movie, it's a donut. But the punchline is, you thought they were rude. You thought oh, yeah, they yeah. were. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. 
and, and until an actual enemy showed up against the church, and then everybody was like, "Where did all the Calvinists? We need the Calvinists. <laughs> know, There's right. a real fight." Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All the old people want to throw punches. Yeah, yeah. Get the reformed people over here. <laughs> Where are the guys that know Where's the actual? Uncle? Where are the guys that know the Bible? Oh, okay. oh, geez, here we go. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. All right, here we go. All we right. got a couple more left. We're, Darren, we want you to follow a worship songwriter from start to finish. Examine the artistic process of the songwriter, how they create the worship song from an idea to performance, the initial spark of the idea, how they form the chord structure, why they wrote it, the musical influence for the song, the process of fine tuning it, and the biblical foundation for it. Heck, even what they ate and the daily pressures of life they faced during its creation. Creation. One song, one anthem, how it came to be. Is that a do, don't, or don't it? That's still a don't it. I love the process. I'm, I'm, I'm a sucker for the process. I'm not judging the content per se just yet. Everything should be documented, so that, that's the full don't it. All righty. Nice. Jason, throw one at him. All right, here we go. Help three entrepreneurs on their journey of using only social media to promote their product or service. Document their trials and errors, the pitfalls of listening to popular advice, and the risks they take and the rewards they gain from kicking against the pricks of conventional wisdom on how to promote a business. We do donor or donut. it. That's a tricky sentence on those words there, but that's a donut. Yeah, yeah. that's a <laughs> yeah. donut. That's a full donut. Right? That's a full donut. I love it. <laughs> All right, this is going to be a softball for you. How about we follow Darren on his journey of social media domination and his quest to post 100 social media posts a day don't that it. impact his community, <laughs> culture, and followers? Are we do, don't, or doing it? You know, depending on who's doing it, it could be all above. It could be all of the above, right? So, um, so that's the donut. That's the donut, and you know, hopefully, we'll find people. South Dakota, right? Yeah, baby. Absolutely. You know it. Oh, that's a nice out on that. All right. Thank you so much for playing Do, Don't, or Don with yeah. us, man. It was awesome. And guys, listen, for those of you listening right now, uh, make sure you are following Darren on Instagram, on social media, all the things he's doing. Darren, can you just give a little shout out to where you're at, where they can follow, how they can get in contact with you if someone needs your services? Yeah, so Don't Creative Agency or just look up Darren Doan on Instagram. One of my favorite platforms, Doan is D-O-A-N-E. So Darren Doan or Doan Creative. Uh, LinkedIn, if you're not on LinkedIn, you got to get on LinkedIn. I'll explain it to you later. But LinkedIn, I believe, is the hottest platform on the planet right now. Mm. You need to be on LinkedIn. Um, you can find me there. Have maybe more of a business conversation. Uh, go to iTunes or Spotify, the Doan Cast. We just hit our 100th episode. Um, Last two years uh, doing the Don't Cast. If you want to track my journey, I started with my podcast when we took our uh, pr film production company of 28 years into a creative agency. The podcast was step one, January 2019. All 200 episodes up at this day is me documenting the journey, what I've learned, what I'm doing, what mm. we're doing with our clients. You don't have to hire me. If you actually just go listen to my podcast, everything we do with our clients and brands, is right there in that podcast. So the, the Don't Cast, find me LinkedIn, Instagram, all that good stuff. Yeah, that's, that's what awesome. we do. We just listen to the Don't Cast and then just copy what he says. I know, right? That's all, yeah, hey, man. <laughs> Free Thank, advice. Thanks man. for all the success there, Darren. <laughs> it's been awesome, man. No. Yeah. You, guys, no. you guys, I can't believe what you guys are doing. I have like a thousand people following me on the Don't Cast. Yeah. I've been doing it for years. You guys, how many people do you have listening to your podcast right now? I, don't, I, don't I think I we're don't at, I don't know, about 3,000 a week right now, and then we got a little social media interaction from <laughs> Uh, yeah. It's just because we sucker guys like you into come yeah, on. Yeah, man. We, we got to <laughs> yeah, give yeah, us yeah. great content. Gotcha, brother. I'm trying so hard. Dude. I'm trying so hard a bunch of hillbillies show up with a really cool title. That's so great. Dude, hey, let, let me plug this real quick for Darren. Do uh, it. Do Cannon it. Press app. Oh. Please get yeah. the Canon Press app. Yeah, we both have it. And now, uh, Darren's newest project is, uh, well, I don't know if it's the newest, but it's on Canon Press, and it's called the Free Speech Apocalypse. Please Ooh, go check title. that out. It is awesome. Came out this week, right? This week. Talk uh, about it for 30 seconds. Saying, yeah, really cool. And that's kind of what I'm doing with my sort of, what's, what's my Christian base? What are, like, the Canon app is now a home for all that stuff, so I'm bringing 
a new podcast there. I'm doing a podcast called Don't Listen to Me on Theology. Nice. I'm going to be interviewing a thing called Don't Rampant, where I interview Doug Wilson. I'm bringing all my films over there. So the canon office. Let's go, let's go. Yeah, man. <laughs> yeah. yeah, baby. I love it, That's man. That's awesome. We I can't it. wait for you to interview Doug. That is awesome. <laughs> it's going to be off the chains. Oh, dude, for that's sure. awesome. For sure. Well, Darren, I know we're going to see you at the end of the month at Fight, Laugh, Feast. And for all those listening, make sure you tune in because I'm sure he's going to hop on an episode or two while we're down there live podcasting at the end of this month. Yep. Make sure you check out all his links. And, uh, Darren, we'll make sure we link you up in all of our social Thank media you. posts. And, obviously, uh, when the podcast airs. Guys, we appreciate you reaching out to us, giving us comments, finding us on Instagram, YouTube, Facebook at Dead Men Walking Podcast. It means yep. a lot when you leave on Apple and Spotify and, and Pandora that we're at. And then even interacting with us and giving us suggestions and creative criticism and all those things on social media. And even the three or four, uh, you know, we're, we're at the next level now. We got three or four uh, trolls now. Oh, uh, nice. So we're Where? at the troll level, baby. I, I want to see him, baby. We're at the troll level, Where? baby. I don't Welcome. know. Welcome. Thank you. you know, Thank you. I, I like uh, trolls. I, you know, I reached out to him and said, hey, let's have some coffee. They didn't respond back. I guess that's trolls don't like coffee. <laughs> but, um, you know, it's all, right. it's, it's all good. <laughs> Guys, we appreciate it. Darren, we thank you for taking your time uh, and uh, coming on the show. And, guys, as always, God bless. Yep. Be sure to follow us on Facebook and Instagram at Dead Men Walking Podcast for full video podcast episodes and clips, or email us at Dead Men Walking Podcast at gmail.com. None you